Hey, podcast listeners. Daniel Ocon, co-founder of Active here. E-commerce is expanding at a rapid rate, but few understand how to scale their revenue online. Active is here to help founders grow their revenue while providing the resources needed to make sure you're successful along the way. If you're interested in us partnering with your brand, go to weareactive.com and apply to work with us today. Welcome to the Evernorth Podcast, where we bring on the explorers, dreamers, and discoverers to find out what their true north is in life. Hope you're all having a great day and enjoy the show. Today on the Evernorth Podcast, we have fellow podcast guest and owner of Into Motion Media, Devin Winter. Welcome to the Evernorth Podcast. What's good? <laughs> is this the third time or the second time I'm on this? Is, this? this is the third time. This is good go. for sure. Dang. It's always good to be back. I'm actually obsessed with doing podcasts now. Um, even though this is the only one I'm ever on, it's still really fun. And I'm very excited for this one because we have a lot to talk about. Yes. You actually brought up, you just brought up podcasts. You previously did a podcast like a long time ago. <laughs> Do you have any pa- plans to start up a oh. podcast again? Um, yeah. So I had a podcast maybe like two years ago and it was pretty funny. Um, you can probably go find the old shit on YouTube. Um, it's just me interviewing friends and I will probably most definitely start one again. Um, because I love talking to people and I love hearing people's story and yeah, I will definitely do that one day. Like I was just, I think I just did a post yesterday just about podcasting and it's like, if you really think about it, instead of asking someone to grab coffee with them, being like, Hey, would love to have you on my podcast. Even if your podcast is not something that you're going to put a lot of time into, just simply asking them to come on a podcast versus I'd love to just have coffee with you just sounds so much better. And you're able to make a larger impact and share that valuable information with other people Mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. I think like the best way to connect with someone who might be hard to connect with or someone you've just been trying to connect with for a while, the best way to connect with them is obviously provide some form of upfront value and asking to sit down for a cup of coffee is a lot to ask from someone like that's their time and their time is valuable. But if you actually ask them to be on a podcast, you're giving them like a platform to share whatever it is they want to share. And that's giving some form of value. And they're way more likely to say yes to that um, than just a cup of coffee. So yeah, yeah I a hundred percent agree with that. And I know for me personally, I would love a platform to have my clients come on to and just share their story and like give them that um, opportunity to do that, um, would be very fun. So I will definitely start one one day. Um, I don't know when, but I'll get on it. Yeah. Do you think you do it with the clients you work with for the podcast? I mean, I wouldn't just, just do it with the clients I work with. Um, but I'd love to obviously do that because my goal when working with the clients is to build like a full on relationship with them to the point where we're really good friends and we just have that solid partnership and relationship. Um, and I would love, I just think that would make our bond even closer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, like I would have, I would have many other people on it as well. Um, just anyone who I find interesting, um, anyone who I would like to like learn from or I think other people would enjoy learning from um yeah I think I would have a mixture of people that are in the very early stages of what it is they're doing and are just trying to figure things out and kind of sharing their journey but I'd also like to go a step further and have on some like older individuals like I'm talking like get some fucking 50 year olds on here that are that have done this shit already or like are so far in their journey and they've seen it all and they could have lists and lists of advice and tips for young people like us. Um, so I think I'd have a very broad spectrum of who I'd have on. Yeah. Um, the old, the older generation is like the 50 plusers, I guess you could say is (laughs) something that I haven't done much with podcasting. I think I've only had like a few people that are older than like 50 plus. Yeah. They're definitely, 
um, harder to connect with because they're not on like social can media DM and, on yeah. in Instagram because they're not on it. So it's harder to connect with them. But yeah, I think some old people that have seen a lot of success have a lot of knowledge to give just because they've literally been through it all and we haven't seen shit yet. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people in our generation could find value in that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, so we were, Devin and I were kind of making bets on how long, if we were going to start off the podcast talking about the coronavirus or not, um, we did not. So I'd say that's yeah. a success. How long has it been? But it's been about five minutes. Nice. Um, that's not bad. <laughs> but for, for this podcast episode specifically, we kind of just want to do one every quarter. We also have another friend of ours, Jalen Lemna that we'd also incorporate within this podcast series. It's just recovering. It's just recapping the past three months mm -hmm. of basically what we've been up to, what we've learned, um, what we've been up to essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And like me, Austin and Jalen, we meet and chat over the phone once a week to kind of help each other through our goals, keep each other accountable and just kind of have that inner circle of people that we can chat with on a weekly basis. So that's why we think it'd be super beneficial just to sit down once a quarter and just break things down and just like chat about life um, and kind of do a review in the quarter type of type of feel. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, finding a group <laughs> of people that you're able to, I mean, meet with weekly is amazing, but also a group of people that is able to like motivate you and keep you accountable for where you want to go in life for sure absolutely and the goals that you set for yourself so austin how how has your quarter been from like start to end like how was it before all this coronavirus shit um how is it leading up to it like how have things been and then how has your life been impacted since this whole thing has started and what has changed in your life since mm -hmm. then yeah i'll just touch on like the big um, big topics, I guess, th through like the last three months. So um, January traveled um, internationally. So I left about like the middle of January. Um, never traveled by myself, really, at all. And that was especially across the world, basically. So that was a completely new experience for me. One of my goals for every quarter is just to travel somewhere new. Um, so I was able to accomplish that was really eye-opening just being somewhere else that you've never been and having that different perspective on like the world because you can always think that there's other people over there but until you actually go over to the other side of the world and you're able to travel to different places you really gain a perspective of like wow there's a lot of people on this earth and we have to take care of it because if we don't it's going to impact a lot more people than you think. Um, and being just being able to travel was amazing too. Was able to work as well through travel. Um, just going to like co-working spots was really fun. That's a dream. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, no, it's, it's crazy though. When I, was, when I was like younger, looking up to other people and thinking like, oh, that'd be such the life to just like travel <laughs> And work and stuff, and it's like, oh, that's awesome. Because um, previous, like, like a year ago, I was just like dreaming and set like a goal. You to made it, travel. Austin. <laughs> Austin freaking made it. Let's go. That's no, crazy, dude. It, but, that's um, so cool. But yeah, it was it was fun. Um, I think a lot of more companies are just gonna look at making remote work more accessible, mm -hmm. and it's just gonna increase the amount of travel people are gonna be doing as well yes do that um so yeah that basically the first month traveling working really enjoying the time didn't do much with evernorth or podcast during that time period um just basically took from january february back until march around when i came back to start the podcast but yeah traveled over there with another coworker. that was amazing anytime that you get an opportunity to travel take it for sure um it was also really easy to adjust your life back home 
So when you travel somewhere, it's much easier to be be able to adjust like your life when you come back to it. Than so going into it. Yeah. yeah so if, yeah. You, if you take yourself out of your current life, you're able to kind of be more analytical. And if there's things you want to like change, habits you want to build, get rid of, it's easier to then come back and make those changes like ASAP. Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're kind of looking at your your life back in the U.S. through like, okay, like that's what I'm coming back to versus like when you're traveling, your your lifestyle has changed. So you're not doing the current day-to-day stuff that you were mm-hmm. really. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah, the last quarter was really good. Obviously with the coronavirus, it's been a bit of a struggle just with being able to do the normal things like working out in the morning basically doing at home workouts I bought some like <laughs> workout band elastic workout band stuff <laughs> to try out so that'll be interesting look Shit. I'm looking at like the kettlebell stuff on Amazon I'm like Jesus stuff is expensive yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah I, I was just on a call with another some other coworkers we're doing uh virtual happy hour <laughs> and I just talked about how many more people are going to appreciate how, what you have and what you're able to do because like right now we're not able to go to the gym. We don't have our freedom. Yeah. We don't have our yeah. freedom. Yeah. Like Devin appreciates being able to go out and shoot at different locations and being able to go meet with like clients, <laughs> go rock climbing, Yeah, go rock climbing, <laughs> go do your normal things. And now it's like, it's all taken away from you. Yeah, just like that. And like, I know it's going to be such a weird feeling when everything is like can go back to normal because you're just going to have such a high level appreciation for like everything. It's going to be force. Yes. <laughs> when you live without something that is normal to you for a long time, when you then go without it and then you gain that back, you have a next level appreciation for it just because you then realize what it was like without those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I experienced that traveling too. Because you're limited to multiple things, like when things would open, mm-hmm. what you're able to do. So it's traveling kind of started that process for me and then came back to it, had maybe a few weeks of normal and then was just hit with the changes of everything. Nice. Um, but yeah, how has is, how is the last three months been for you? Yeah, I know it's completely changed as well. But yeah, I'd love yeah, to yeah, yeah. Dive into that. Yeah, so I guess like first quarter for me, um, as far as like, so I'll split it up like work and personal. So as far as like work, I couldn't be more grateful with like how everything was going. Um, was go- I say was going <laughs> is is going is going, um, and. Uh, Just like the fact that in past years, um, winters can be very slow for me. I'm in the video industry, um, by the way, for those of you that didn't know that. Uh, Work can be very slow in the winter and then pick up in the springtime and then go all the way through summer and fall. But it was like by the end of January, it was already just like picking up like crazy. And then February, my mind was just blowing. Like one week alone, I brought on like six clients, which blew my mind. And going absolutely amazing um doing shoots non-stop editing non-stop just having so much fun with it um and also getting to work with just fun fun people I got to work with Austin on a project I mean it's just like working on super fun stuff so very grateful there um personal life definitely definitely was good but was struggling with some like health stuff um I was basically I basically get sick. I was, not anymore. I was getting sick for about eight months. I get sick like every two to three weeks. Um, And it'd be like these head colds and I would feel drowsy, tired, and um, just not myself. And it was very bad in January and February. I was literally sick for most of January and at least every other week in February. And it's like the type of sick where... Um, you, you can like still do your day to day stuff, but it like not at the level you want to do it at. So, um, and like the biggest thing for me struggling with that was I wasn't able to like 
give my all and like give my full self to the people that I surround myself with on like a day to day basis or like say I had a meeting with someone I wasn't able to like have all of my energy there just because I was like just drowsy and not feeling my best as well as just day to day stuff like going into the office and seeing people I know and just feeling out of it and not even wanting to talk to people um so I think in February sometime early February I went in and got like a full body scan or it was late February got a full body scan figured out what was wrong and it was some through some foods I was eating was causing some inflammation in my head which causes like these cold symptoms to come back every few weeks so I got a ton of uh like very natural like medicine stuff that I take daily now and I haven't been sick in like four weeks um, so I'm very grateful there to finally have found like the core problem there um, because now I can give my all to the world and you have to take care of yourself so you can take care of the rest of the world, your family, the people around you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how quarter one has been going. Um, no, it's, corona- it's really good that you went in though so to get grateful. that checked out because you're starting to become known as a guy that would get, like, you're sick a lot. A lot. And being able to realize that and go in and get that checked Mm -hmm. and figuring out, like, the problem and then the solution to that. Yeah, it was, like, there's no worse feeling than, like, feeling sick, having to go to a shoot and having to try to, like, it sounds horrible, but, like, literally disguise that I was sick. Like, try to be all, like, energetic. Like, let's do this. And, like, I'm in an industry where it takes a lot of, like, and most industries do it, not just video, obviously, but, like, creativity takes, you have to be fully there to actually do it right and to create what you're trying to create. So going to these shoots and having to almost, like, act like I was doing all right was very hard and then I would get home from the shoot and just be exhausted just from trying to have all that energy in that shoot when I really didn't have that energy yeah very grateful I went in definitely should have gone in sooner um like absolutely when you're not feeling your best it's worth it to just go in right away and get it fixed because you're gonna waste so much time in the long run um waste so much time and money in the long run by not getting it fixed but yeah Mm -hmm. um i guess as far as like diving into coronavirus these past few weeks wow as it affected a ton of stuff um basically every shoot got pushed back to april um you think those will be pushed back farther they'll be pushed back until we can shoot them yeah I think pushing him back till April is just like, hey, let's push him back till April, take it week by week. And if we got to push it back till May, we'll push it back till May. Um, But on the other hand, I have other clients who need what I can provide right now. I have clients that are trying to get online. They're trying to go virtual. And in some cases, I can literally save their business or create a whole different revenue source for them by creating videos that they can solve their current problems within their business. Um, So I still have, like I had a shoot this week where we're taking this company completely online. Um, And then I'm bidding on a project right now that'll be within the next two weeks here shooting. And I think it's hard because like I can't just... I can, but I I don't want to just put everything on pause and like not shoot at all because like I, at the end of the day, I need to make money still. Um, but I think like doing these shoots with caution and, uh, social distancing and just being aware of the actual situation is super important. And I realized this on my shoot this week, I actually completely forgot like coronavirus was even a thing while I was at the shoot I was just doing my normal thing not focusing on social distancing at all and I got home and I was like shit I completely forgot that was even going on um so it's it's such a sticky situation where I I want to be part of the solution not the problem so like staying home is the best way to do that 
but then it's like, I, I can, can I just put everything on pause and say, hey, no, let's shoot. I, I probably could, yes. But do I just like quit making any money then? <laughs> like, how's that work? I don't know. Yeah. I don't have a solution there, but these are all things that we can talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're a, like a service based business that mm-hmm. you have to be present to be able to perform your job. It's like you you have to be willing to work around that, but find ways to mitigate that risk. Yeah, and I'm not completely unaware of what's going on. Like, I know what's going on, and I know the risk that I'm being put at. Like, I know I know it's not ideal for me to go out and shoot. I know that. I know I should just be staying home. Um, but at the end of the day, I think where I'm at is I got to meet in the middle somewhere and do some shoots the ones that need to be done, but then do them with caution and be more aware than I was at the one this week and keep that distance with people and just make sure it's a minimum amount of people there at the shoot um, and just taking those precautions. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that helps a ton. Um, How is it? Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, were you going to tailor off the same topic? Because I was going to go into something different, if you want to continue. I mean, I was just going to ask, like, how's the working at home life? Like, do, oh, you, working at home? do you actually enjoy yeah. working at home? Do you miss the office? Because I know me personally, I miss the community at the office. I'm a people person. I miss walking in, seeing Glenn, working at the table in it. Shout out, Glenn. Um, I miss seeing Nate. I miss seeing Jeff and Nate and Tisla in the office. Like, I miss seeing everyone there. And it's been super hard to be working at home and mainly because I miss those, miss the community at WeWork. So I just want to like touch on how it's been without that. With the, How's yeah, it been yeah. working? Yeah, 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 you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I really miss like seeing the entire active team together and seeing them on like a daily basis and everything. Although I do really enjoy being able to just zone in on my work that's something that I value a lot Mm -hmm. and just like that time to be alone and being able to focus without like different distractions helps a lot just with being able to accomplish what, whatever you set out for the day. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I do, I do miss we work, although it, it kind of brings back the perspective of it's also good to, but depending on what you enjoy, it's also good to like change up your work environment absolutely. because if you do something for too long consistently, it will affect the negative. It will affect the creative ideas you could have have if you're in a new experience. So if you're doing something consistently, being able to change things up also offers a different thought pattern and that allows to more creative thought thoughts um, throughout the day. And like when you're working too. Um, but as far as like working from home it's been good we're not like pestering each other i guess all the time <laughs> because because devin and i we both work basically right right there just by the window and we haven't pestered each other a lot so i that's think it good. helps both. like i worked here like two days before you were working here and i couldn't get shit done i ate 19 meals a day and it helps that you're here also working I, I can like kind I have like that person to keep me accountable in a way. But yeah, it's it's interesting you touched on that topic of like changing up the routine a little bit because that's actually a fear of mine is like if I start doing the same shit for too long, like I start thinking to myself, damn, I'm like 30, 40 years old and I'm still in in this same routine. Get me out of here. So I like to like switch it up every now and then, you know, I don't like long-term commitments in that form where I like to just kind of roam free. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been, it's crazy how many people too are also trying to, if they're, if they have a co-working spot, they're trying to get out of that co-working spot and just like the impact it's going to have on co-working places. Yeah. And like, I think one thing I realized really quick, cause I was working when a lot of people started working remotely, I was still going to the office because it's one block away and I 
and no one was there. I was literally like one of four people on my entire floor, which is usually full of like hundreds of people. And like what I realized is I'm not paying. And I knew this all along, but what I really realized is I'm not paying for an office. I'm paying for a community and an experience. Um, and the office is pretty much worthless to me without the, those, the community and the experience being there. Cause it was not fun working there. I can still go work there if I want, but it's not even something I want to do right now. Yeah. It's so eerie because there's like no one there and it's yeah. just a bunch of offices. It feels like an abandoned office. Yeah. Really? It's horrible. Yeah. It's not fun. Some people like that. It's not for me. I love being around people. I love meeting new people. And literally my goal is at the office is just to literally have a conversation with everyone on my floor or everyone in the office. And like I do it all the time where I just literally bump into someone and I start a conversation with them just because I like meeting new people. It's literally my favorite thing in the world. So that's probably been the hardest thing about working at home. One thing I did want to touch on a little bit Mm -hmm. is given the current circumstances and also one of my goals for to do more is just being able to go to events that also benefit other people in more need. So you and I, we recently attended an event which was to load up food and bring it to different like apartments and areas mm-hmm. where people, they, they I'm trying to think. People that need People that need meals and people that need food and might not be able to afford it. Yeah. We, yeah, we delivered. Yeah. So we, we delivered food and that was very interesting because I've never really been in that area and it's something, just that act is something that I want to be doing more this year of. And it was very interesting when we were delivering the food because we weren't, we weren't really able to communicate with the other people we were delivering it to, Mm -hmm. but everyone that we delivered it to was very like gracious and um, just grateful that w- for what we were doing. Like they were always yeah. super nice. Yeah. Which was crazy. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something I want to do more of um, is volunteering. It's something that can be hard to do too because you can get so caught up yeah. in like your schedule and be like, oh shoot, I feel like I don't have any time. Like, Do I even want to make time for this? I can just donate money. But it's something that just like knowing there's another part. Yeah. Oh, it's good to do both. No, no, I know. I know. I know. (laughs) I I wasn't saying you weren't saying that. But I think what's, I think it's great to give money. Um, Like one of my things I do is I keep dollar bills or $5 bills in my center council and hand them out whenever I see some uh, homeless person asking for money. Um, But I think you gain a different perspective when you go volunteer Um, and you actually get let into those people's lives and actually get to see how that person may be lit. Like we got to see inside these people's apartments and got to see kind of a little bit of their life. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's definitely important to see that actually see that impact. See that impact. Yeah. Yeah. See it hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting too, because a lot like traveling, you're you're able to go and experience other people's way of life, and through that you gain like a different perspective. Like, oh, there's there's people that living in like these apartments. They don't really look like they even go outside and do much stuff. I guess it's kind of mm-hmm. like what I was getting from it. Yeah. Is it felt like they, um, yeah, because they didn't really speak English, English no. that well. No, so that was very that was very interesting as well. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's, yeah, it's good to do Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. I'd love to like sit down with people that were in there and like just hear their story. Yeah, for sure. Most people probably have a crazy story. Not from here. Probably flew their whole family here just for like a better opportunity. Yeah. And now they're trying to make stuff happen. Um, Barely speak English, which I can't imagine how hard that is. Like moving here, barely knowing English and then trying to, build a life for your family yeah um there there's a kid that you're talking to on one of the floors and he's just like 
he was hustling, he was cleaning stuff, yep. and like that kid was the man. Yeah, that, yeah. that kid was the man. <laughs> he was literally just happy we were there, happy to help wherever he needed it or wherever we needed it. And he was cleaning everything, making sure we're all good. Um, yeah, that dude was a man for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, do you have, so we both are continuing to read and it's something that we're still doing weekly. Do you have a favorite book from the last three months? Oh yeah. Um, ex- I think I read Extreme Ownership in the past three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Extreme Ownership by Jocko. It's one hell of a book. It's actually really good. And that's like something I believe in a ton is just like taking accountability for your actions, taking full accountability as a leader. Um, And it's something that I've, I used to be very bad at as a kid. If I got bad grades, it was a teacher's fault. If I was bad at throwing a football is because the coach wasn't good. It was, I always like, ha- I was blamed. Right. And like the second I like started doing video and started my own business and had no one to blame and like realized it was way easier just to take full accountability for every situation. Um, that's like something I really believe in. And that book just made it even more clear to me that that's the route to go and it, he also just has a lot of great like leadership tact how to just be a good leader um and you realize that because we see like leaders on movies and like how they might treat the people below them and we see it on movies and that's not the actual like right way to ever lead in most cases on movies i'm not calling out all movies but um how he explains leadership is just very cool. Like how he explains it and he's very knowledgeable. Yeah. Know how to be a good leader. Yeah. I totally agree. Like there's things that you might think is like what a leader should do. Mm -hmm. Like yell at people. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's one. Um, It's definitely one. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But be kind of like this commanding force upon other people whatever leadership position you're in and that's not even true Mm -hmm. like you literally have to look at yourself as the bottom of the pole really when it comes to leadership because if you're not able to properly communicate like actions give your other employees the ability to lead themselves and just taking ownership for actions that aren't even really your fault, Mm -hmm. but because you have influence among other people, you also have to take ownership because it's like, oh, you know, I could have, I could have helped Devin on that, even though I'm not maybe a part of his plan. It's like, oh, what could have I done better Mm -hmm. to help you assist and propel you to that goal? Yes. And it, like at the end of the day, to be completely honest, it is way easier and less time consuming to just take ownership of the situation. As a leader, you are wasting your time if you're trying to blame others. Take ownership and then take action. And if you made a mistake or if someone else even on your team made a mistake, just take ownership and figure out the solution to that mistake you made instead of wasting time trying to blame someone else. Um, Yeah, what was your favorite book, Austin? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, that was was good. I love that book as well. Yeah. Um, My favorite book... um, I read, I read two books. One of them, I mean, also it's one of Jocko's new books, but it's Leadership, Strategies, and Tactics. That one's really good, kind of just tying off of extreme ownership, going more into the tactical side of kind of his, his values around like leadership itself. The other book I did read was um, by Robert Iger, and he was the... CEO of the Walt Disney Company for 15 mm-hmm. years. So he basically shares his entire journey through starting a really early, really small job at the ABC like media company when it was early and just being able to work through and come up as the CEO of Walt Disney Company. Mm-hmm. And it was really through just mergers and acquisitions that he was able to get to that point. But his journey is really crazy. It also does kind of tailor into leadership. 
but I just didn't really think that he touched on leadership that much. It's more so like his story and his experience, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a good book. Would definitely recommend it. Um, yeah. Nice. Do you... I didn't listen to podcasts that much this the last three months. I've been lacking. I You've been lacking. Why. It's it's really something that you listen to when you're like driving or doing something where you're not super focused on the task at hand. I listen well, to every Evernorth podcast. Oh, except the you. recent one. I gotta <laughs> listen to that one yet. And then I listen to every Chris Harder podcast. And then um Jim Quick has some good ones. And then Stephen Botler. Oh yes. Has some good ones. He's coming out with a new book. Yeah. Steven is. Um, Pumped to pump, read it. Jim yeah. Quick is too. Okay. I'll be getting both of those. Yeah. Is there is there someone this year that you really want to meet that you have yet to connect with? Yeah. I mean, some. I honestly like. I should say in why too. You should have. I, I don't have like a specific person to be completely honest. I I, I just want to, I don't follow like, and maybe I should, or maybe it doesn't even matter, but I don't really like follow anyone very closely. Like to be honest, I kind of just do my own thing and I don't really, besides the people I just listed off as far as podcasts, I don't really follow many people super closely. Um, but I will say I'm I, I'm just hyped to hopefully connect with more high level individuals this year, um, and just like figure out if I can help them with anything, as well as just surround myself with people that I look up with or look up with look up to. Um, but I don't know one person specifically to be honest. Mm-hmm. Should I have that one person? No. <laughs> Who's your one person just, that you would want him? Um, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe, I mean, it's. I'm not really trying to seek them out, super, like just zoned and yeah, focused yeah. to try to like connect with these people. Yep. It's more of like I'm trying to take advantage of the opportunities to possibly network with mm-hmm. someone or connect with someone. Is really what I'm like. Yeah. The goal is. Yep. Um, Who's that one person? I don't know if I have like one person really, to be honest. Okay. Um, I'd love to connect with Steven, St- mm. Steven Botla. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I've, I've been like an early listener to his podcast Yep. and doing, doing like the mental health series with Antonio, although we've kind of like paused, put that on pause for the moment, I'd say right now, just cause we're not, we're not trying to intentionally ask people to come onto the podcast we're using that for like put on pause maybe for like a month until mm-hmm. we're able to do that a little more comfortably. But I think like his his mindset around like mental health, being a CEO and also being very open to what he's sharing is something that's very attractive, not only to like myself, but all the other people that listen to him mm-hmm. is just like his openness to different topics, I think is what has really like launched his podcast. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. He I love his solo podcasts more than the ones he has with the guests, just because and I know we talk about that. Just because they're both good, but like just because he gets so personal and just like dives into whatever he feels like talking about. He's very vulnerable. And like I am very drawn to that. Most people are very drawn to that when someone is vulnerable. And doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like they're hiding anything they're just kind of saying it all and like the real stuff too like not just business but personal life and I know Antonio does a good job with that as well but like he like Steven talks about all aspects of life not just the business aspect Mm -hmm. which I find way more interesting right now actually just because there's so much content out there on the business stuff that when someone kind of when a business person or business owner, CEO talks about the personal life side of things, it's like very interesting. Would you say that you're very, would you say you're vulnerable as like a person? Like you're open to sharing stuff pretty openly? Yes. 
I would say I'm vulnerable. Um, yes, but not online much. True. I, I like if you go and see my posts, I have long captions and I talk about a lot of things, but I'm not extremely open on the things that might not be great at the time. Um, in person I am like, I'll talk with people about it, but like online, not so much. Yeah. Why is, um, hmm, trying to think. I should disregard that, that, um, but yeah, just for, just for me, I'd say I try to be, I try to be open with other people given the intentionality of it. Mm -hmm. So if they're, they're just like surface level conversation and it's not really like getting to the point of like wanting to go deep. Yeah. It's like, it's like a feeling almost where like you feel that you can really like talk about something very seriously and open up and be like vulnerable about it. Um, it's like what you really appreciate is when people just be like brutally honest. Absolutely. And I think it's a good way to build trust like extremely fast with someone is to be vulnerable. Um, if you share, if you're vulnerable with someone they're they're going to trust you instantly. If they're vulnerable with you, you're going to have that trust with them. So if you want to build trust with people, you have to be vulnerable. And that's why if you're building a personal brand online and you want your audience to trust you, you have to be open with them and you have to have an actual personality there and you have to be real and vulnerable and people will be more drawn to your brand. So I think it goes both within person and online. Um, Absolutely. You were, you were diving into some clothing apparel last, last few months. (laughs) Do you want to talk about that as, um, I, don't, I don't know how much you want to talk about that because it's it's kind of like a top secret project. Yeah, it's definitely a top secret. Shit, now I'm gonna have to do you it. Don't have to, you don't have to talk about it too much. But, yeah. So um, nice. This is really gonna hold me accountable. It's honestly been on pause since coronavirus started. But before then, I was talking to. Oh shit. So do I actually talk about it or do it? Because you already said clothing. Well, clothing's okay because you don't you don't need to dive into like the topic too much. It's it's a clothing topic, like clothing business. It's going well, into, it's not just a clothing be, business though. It's custom it's, clothing. It's custom, custom clothing, clothing, but it's it's a solution for a problem that I don't know how much you're going to dive into. It's, I'm like, it's a solution for a problem that videographers and photographers deal with on a daily basis, and it'll be solved through clo- a piece of clothing. Um, I don't really want to dive into it, but we can die. I don't want to dive into like what the product is, but we can dive into it. So like my whole goal in life is to like basically create what I wish existed, um, and have fun along the way. And this is something that I honestly, honestly wish existed. I think it'd be an amazing brand around this specific product. And quite honestly, one of the reasons I want to create the product so is so that I can make cool videos for the product and for the company. Um, I'm always looking for an excuse to make videos, to make cool videos. Um, and this would be another way I would be able to do that. And to be honest, I, I don't know. I know like, one thing I've learned in the past year is like the importance of saying no to some opportunities. Um, and I've said no to plenty, but I think this is one I absolutely want to follow through with and pursue. Um, and I think it'd be fun. And I'm pumped to like learn about a different space because it's a product. It's not a service. Like right now I provide a service, um, when I create videos for my clients, but this is something completely different, and it's B to C, not B to B, which I know nothing about. I pretty much only know B to B, um, and it's on. Yeah, I'm just pumped to learn about a different space. Mm-hmm. No, B, you have a good advantage to it because you're connected within the industry that you're looking to target and promote this product with. Yeah, I think it's super important to 
when you start a business or when you create a product that you're actually passionate about the industry that product is in. Um, because if that passion isn't there and you're not psyched about it, you're not going to push forward through all the hardships dealing with in the early stages. There's, it's just like creating a product (laughs) is like, um, for like the little I've done already to pursue it. It's just like a whole nother world for me. And like one thing that's very hard already to like wrap my head around is because like what I sell as far as video wise, like a very high ticket item. It's like four to six K range, but then stepping down into this new company, it's like 30 to $40 product. So like just looking at the price difference and like seeing shit, I got to sell this many pieces of this product just to accomplish the same thing that this creating one video would accomplish um, was is definitely like something hard to wrap my head around. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Different, different dynamics there though too, because it would be like a product that you could run ads for. It could essentially achieve autonomous control where you could set up like a specific ad. And once you are able to achieve a certain return on ad spend, highly scalable. Yeah. I mean, just highly scalable product. And I know that for sure. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about that whole thing. I, to be honest, it's on pause until coronavirus is gone. Like right now, my main focus is trading and editing the projects that I already have. Um, that's yeah. That, those are my two main focuses. I've been spending a lot of time trading. Yeah, how's trading been going? Trading. You having them at Claren yet or? <laughs> <laughs> Trading's going good. Like, so actually, oh, this might actually be a good topic. So this is this is something that we got to touch on though. Devin, you've been trading for how long? It'll be three years in a month. Three years. Exactly a month from tomorrow. Because I started my, I opened my brokerage account the day I turned eighteen. The day I legally could. Um, and I've been trading since, and as of right now, for the past three, four months, I've been consistently profitable, not anything crazy, like not like anything I could live off of, but I'm consistently profitable, which actually makes me top 5% of day traders, which is very interesting to think about. Um, but like one thing I want to talk about is like, People might ask, people ask me sometimes like, what's, what's the point of trading? Like you're not solving problems through trading. You're not like providing value to a business or a person. Like you're just watching a chart and predicting whether it's going to go up and down and you either, and you make money if it goes in the direction of your favor. But at the end of the day, that's not like provide, like that's, that that some people might find that like unfulfilling, right? Um, but what the one thing I find like very cool about trading, and this is always why I've wanted to to trade, to be honest, and this is why I got into it, is it is a source of income. If you get good at it, put years of work into it, and have extreme discipline, it is a source of income that is controlled to zero by other people if that makes sense like it's not controlled your your income isn't controlled by customers um by clients and like anything related to that it's controlled by you and like a chart and if you have that skill dialed you'll always have that income no matter where the market is at like if i couldn't pick up another video client for six months that and if if the market t- turns a certain direction and like my business were to slow down, that might be out of my control. But it, when trading, it's just you and charts. And like the co- cool thing about trading is it's highly scalable and you can use that money to then start the businesses you want to create that you wish existed, create the products you wish existed and invest in businesses you believe in 
Um, and you can do so much and you can give back with that money and you can do so much with it. So that's kind of been my overall goal with it is get, is get good at trading. So then I can use that money to then create these other things. But yeah. It's been fun. Something you didn't touch there was that I've noticed in the past year, especially your knowledge of the U S economy and like the U S markets and just like news in general has like increased a lot. Like Definitely. you're much more aware of like the situation of the U.S. economy in different like financial terms that will benefit you in like the long run coming from trading, not just like a money perspective, mm-hmm. but also like knowing what is going on, how to benefit from different things and being able to understand financial terms, really. Yeah, yeah. I think like I've always been kind of like a nerd in that area. Like growing up, I loved watching like one of my favorite movies is The Big Short. If you've ever seen that, it's about mm-hmm. like the 08 housing crash. Like growing up in high school, I loved movies, anything around the market, whether like anything around the stock market. I love any of that stuff. So I kind of geek out over it and I just love learning about it. And that's, yeah, I think what's, I, I used to never look at news. Like I, you should just trade off analytics. I still do for the most part, but I always look at news now. And with the market now being way the hell down and just following the news and seeing how the market reacts to it. And like today, the report comes out that however many millions are unemployed, 32 million, 32 million million. unemployed and the market is going up all day. And then like figuring out why is it going up when unemployment is skyrocketed. Um, and just like learning about that stuff is super interesting to me. And that can definitely help in other areas of business as well. But just a disclaimer, trading is one of the, like is next level hard. I know Austin knows this, like it's very hard. And the only way to actually succeed at, at it is if you have, like extreme, extreme, and with anything, to be honest, is if you have extreme, extreme, extreme amounts of passion for it and you genuinely enjoy it because it's not a get rich quick thing and it will take, like the question is, you have to ask yourself, if I make, if I lose money for the next five years, will I still be able to push forward? And if you say no, and it's not worth it for that end payout, then don't even... Yeah, then mm-hmm. it, it's it's such a long term play, but yeah, mm-hmm. agreed. Um, looking forward to towards quarter two. What are you looking forward to most? I know we haven't talked about it much. Coronavirus to be done. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> I'm ready um, for it to be done already. Yeah, for sure. Just being able to. I'm taking it week by week. To be honest. It's so yeah, hard to true. look. It's so hard to look three months ahead right now and see where I'll be at. And I'm sure you're in the same boat, like see where we'll be at in three months when all this is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know just in like the next coming weeks, being able to, I know it's like hard to maybe sign up for different events mm-hmm. that are giving back and like helping the community, but also like donating um, your time and money during like this time is like super important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially if like, this is very much a personal thing, but like, cause we, people making under like a certain income will receive those checks. Mm-hmm. And based on like your circumstances, being able to think of like what you can do with like that extra money coming in mm-hmm. to like help other people yeah. that may need it more is like very helpful. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's just, uh, with that money coming in, that twelve hundred dollars, it's twelve hundred dollars, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think me personally, like I know I'll be fine through all this. Like I'm, I've played it very safe up to this point and saved and saved and saved, so that way I would never have to feel uncomfortable in a situation like this. Um, and I know for a fact that. There might be, yeah, there might be people struggling out there um, to pay their rent or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'd love to give back with that 
money that I receive through that. And on that note, if any of you listening are struggling through this whole crisis and you need maybe help financially or you just need someone to talk to or you need advice on something and you need some guidance moving forward or maybe you need help putting a plan together on how to get through this and maybe even come out of it on top and stronger than before, like just reach out, like DM me on Instagram and I'm more than happy to chat. Um, fuck it. All my shoots are pushed back to like May, (laughs) April. So I got plenty of time. Shoot me a DM. Like, honestly, I'd love to help any way I can. So yeah. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Sweet. Uh, yeah, definitely make sure to support like local businesses at this time. Restaurants. Go order some takeout. I think, I think we'll probably go, I think I'm going to go order some, uh, takeout tonight. Really? I haven't. Yeah. Nice. So, um, Where's the spot? Where's the restaurant tonight, Austin? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Nolo's Parlor Free House. I honestly feel like I have to check to make sure like they're still some of them are still open. Okay, I'm sure I'm sure like a good amount of them in the North Loop area mm-hmm. are still open. But guys, um, yeah, ten if, fifteen dollar meal. If we all help support these our favorite restaurants, and just make sure they they stay afloat and like can even break even throughout these months and just like it's it can help a ton because this could be a rumor, but I heard that if this goes all the way with this going all the way through May and possibly further, um, about 70% of restaurants could be shutting down. Um, so if you want, if you have a favorite restaurant of yours and you want them to make it through this, so you can still eat their amazing food, get out there and support them. Mm. Yeah. Especially businesses too, for sure. Yeah. Um, so close it off, Devin. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. I, I, oh, no, yeah, okay. you want to say something? Oh, I got to say go. one thing. I got to say one thing. Okay. So while we're, and I, I, want, I made a post about this today and I just want to like touch on it a little bit because what is like the biggest excuse people have for not taking action or for not learning something new or for not doing something that they might have in the back of their head that they want to do biggest excuse that they commonly have is they don't have the time well with this available time now with a lot of you maybe not being able to work with a lot of you maybe not being able to leave the house and go do anything that one like this is super interesting to me because I'm like hype to see what comes out of the coronavirus, right? Like I'm hyped to see the learning lessons, the businesses that come out stronger, the new businesses that come out, the new products, all this stuff, because that biggest excuse that people had disappeared completely. Like that biggest excuse was, I don't have the time. Well, guess what? Most of us have the extra time now. So I just want to like encourage everyone listening to this to read that book you didn't have time to read before, write that book you didn't have time to write before, learn to play the guitar, um, go learn anything new, maybe start researching that product you've been dying to create or that you wish was out there and just start diving into it and take action because now is the time and you will, if you're not taking advantage of like this free time, you'll come out of this crisis regretting you didn't take action when you had the time because we're all going to be busy again believe it or not when this is all done all of our lives will be jammed pack again doing stuff and you'll have that excuse again you'll be able to use that excuse i don't have time by the way that's never an excuse but now it's definitely not now it's definitely not an excuse right now busy excuses (laughs) that is never an excuse but right now especially that's not an excuse and yeah Use this time wisely. It's not the time to fucking sit on your couch, watch Netflix all day. It's the time to learn something new, take action, call that loved one you haven't called in a long time, and do all the stuff you didn't have time for before. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, Yes. I'd I'd also like to kind of like tailor off of that. It's like for... For maybe you and me, it feels like when they're like, oh, with the extra time you have, the only really extra time I feel like I've gained is from like my workouts in the morning (laughs) being shorter. (laughs) Other than that, it's been like the same thing. 
to be honest, really? really. Okay. Because I'm not one to have a bunch of meetings like throughout the week that are dependent on physical connection. I mean, maybe not doing the podcast for like a few weeks mm-hmm. would would open up more time on the weekends because generally my weekends are consumed probably like half the time with doing the podcast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing where like, if you do have the time with, with the more excess time through having like restaurants shut down, you're not, not able to go hang out with friends like you used to just like using that time and thinking about how you could utilize it better is and that goes for way. any any yeah. situation, whether we're in coronavirus or not, like figuring out how you can better better utilize that time. And like this isn't saying work 24 hours a day. That's not what that's saying. I'm just saying like time is like I can't get over it. Like time is next level valuable. And none of us know how much more of it we got. And the last thing I want to do personally is regret not using it better. Like thinking about the lives I could have changed with that extra time. You know what I mean? Helping the impactful businesses grow that it, like this, all this stuff I could have done with that extra time. I don't want to regret not using it to help change the world. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Sweet. Well, Devin, it's been a pleasure. Um, this has I'm been so we much were, fun. I'm, I'm glad we were able to, Hop on the podcast, especially it being like full on quarantine and people <laughs> not wanting to like hop on a podcast. So super grateful for this moment and you being able to come on and share the value that you have. Let's so, go. Thank I you. am hyped. I will see you guys in Q2. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to the show. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a review on iTunes, share it with friends and family. And you can find us at ever underscore north on Instagram and Twitter and ever north co on Facebook.